Okay, guys, uh, welcome back. We're going to talk about piecewise linear functions today. Um, a piecewise linear function, I like to call a Frankenstein of functions. Um, that's because, like Frankenstein being a monster, stitch, well, not a monster, but, you know, I don't want to get into philosophy and literature, but he was stitched together from other things. Um, uh, the piecewise function is taking linear graphs that are stitched together. So I know it might have been a while since we've done some linear graphs. So let's talk about your y equals mx plus b. Remember that your m value is your slope or gradient is what IB curriculums call it. Remember that's your rise over your run. So this uh, m is equal to change in y over change in x, which is the same thing as rise over run. And then the B value is your Y intercept. So let's look at this example. Um, this is two functions that are stitched together. From negative two to three, the function is four. Now that's slightly confusing because that just means every output is four no matter what the input. Then the second part of the function is that between 3 and 7, it follows this form, negative x plus 7. So that has a slope of negative 1 and a y-intercept of 7. First thing we're going to do is find f of 0. Well, f of 0, notice that 0 falls within the negative to 2, negative 2 to 3 range. So because it falls in that section of the piecewise function, you're only going to use this part of it. Now that's slightly confusing that it's just four because that means no matter what x value you put into it, it will be four. So because it falls in that range, it's just four. Now f of six, that input is in between three and seven. So that means that you're going to input that six into negative x plus seven. So that equals uh, negative six plus seven, which is one. State the domain of the function. Well, notice that the domain starts at negative 2, goes all the way up to 3, including 3. Then it starts right after 3 again, so there's no really hole in it. It goes from negative 2 to 3 and then 3 to 7. So the entire domain would be, oh, let's use proper IB notation, x, such that x is an element of real numbers and negative 2 less than or equal to x is less than or equal to 7. Not sure what the back of your book would say. They might just say negative 2 less than or equal to x less than or equal to 7. But yeah, the, the fancy notation is this right here. Now to sketch the graph. Well, between negative 2 and 3, it's just constantly at 4. So that means from negative 2 all the way up to 3 right here, it's just going to be at 4. So let me see, does it include negative 2? It does. So it starts at 4 and then continues at 4 all the way till 3. So that's just a solid horizontal line that goes through 4. Then from 3 to 7, so that's like here, starting at, I'll delete that. Starting at 3 and going all the way to 7, that's 8, jolly starting at 3 and going all the way to 7, um, that it follows the pattern negative x plus 7. Now, negative x plus 7 um, would normally hit, you know, it would normally touch here at 7 and then go down 1, over 1, down 1, over 1, down 1, over 1. But since that part of the graph doesn't exist, it only it starts existing at 3, we don't include it. So I'm actually going to delete those marks because it will start right here and then go down one over one down one over one down one over one down one over one so it looks like this that is a sketch of the function all right just a real quick one uh, there is another video to go with this but i realized that there was some piecewise function so 